The Living Cultures show is a photo exhibition happening in two sections at the Seattle Public Library on 4th Avenue in downtown Seattle. My name is Sharon Ava Granger and I'm a professional portrait photographer. The Living Cultures exhibit for me is a way to connect indigenous cultures from a hundred years ago to today. And we're doing it with the vehicle of Edward Curtis. In the time of Curtis, there was this belief held that the indigenous cultures were vanishing. Well, they're not. They're resilient, they're strong, they're moving forward in extraordinary ways as the world changes and develops. And they're very involved in the world around them. Curtis would be, I think, very pleased to see what's happening today. <laughs> hey! So good to see, good to see you. you. Welcome to the library. Thank you. Good to have this all up and it's together. Up, and it's our first exhibit for Beyond the Frame to be Native. Mm -hmm. That's an important thing, and it's important to us that it has a very clear Native voice. And yes. Living Cultures does all that and more. Yes. So yes. we're really yes. excited. We live in this amazing part of the world where there is this rich, rich culture and most people aren't exposed to it. Right. And Curtis saw it a hundred years ago. Right. And it's still here and it's still very strong and very resilient. That was, for me, the big premise of this when I was approached by Gary Kunis and he saw some of the photography I was doing. He wanted to have me do an exhibition of the living cultures. Can you show this? Can you walk through the cultures? And we got this wonderful idea to have native writers. Right. So they are writing to the images I made. I wanted to focus on four nations that I have very close ties to. And they were four groups very important in the Curtis photography. So I chose close to my home, the Lummies. The Lummi Nation is politically and commercially one of the most successful nations in the Northwest Coast. The Kwakwakiwaks are a lifelong family members, extraordinary group of people. The Haida in Haida Gwaii have been in the forefront of so much of the Northwest Coast art. And the Klingette, I had to choose them because I have an adopted uncle. <laughs> you had no choice there. Had no choice there. There are hundreds of nations in this area and we just drew from four. Well, Sharon, it's been really great looking at these, but there are more. There's more to this exhibit on level eight. Let's go up and take a look. Let's do that. Here we are. Okay. So the, the interesting thing about this second part of Living Cultures is that now we're gonna use a Edward S. Curtis image mm -hmm. and Sharon Granger, one of your images. Mm -hmm. And you've paired them You've taken a Curtis image and created an image of your own that answers it in some way or updates it or you know, makes it accessible in a different way. So we wrapped Sadie in one of her dad's blankets that he had woven and she looked over at me for a moment and I had that aha, oh, that exchange. Right, I said, don't is. move. Yeah. And yeah. this was the image yeah. we made, yeah. And then we have <clears throat> one of the most famous Yes, images for of Curtis yes. for Seattle, and yeah. that's of Princess Angeline. Yes. Princess Angeline was a really important figure in the Curtis photography. It was one of the first key indigenous figures that he actually spent time with. He paid her for images. He went down to her small dwelling, and he went with her when she collected clams, when she sold clams. So he had a relationship with her. And in that close-up portrait, basically I'm just seeing the roadmaps of her life in her face. And this is Mrs. Lily Speck of Alert Bay, and it is one of the iconic images of mine, of indigenous people. She was a delightful lady. She spoke entirely in Kwakwala, in her indigenous language, and she was held in really high regard by many people in the community, so I liked that juxtaposition. You can see the age and the stories in Princess Angeline's face, you can see the same stories in Lily Speck's face. And I love this corner of the whole exhibition. I just think you did an amazing job displaying yeah. this. So I had some great material to yes, work you with. Did, you did. The other thing that we got to bring in the show is the regalia. And people would just came to me, indigenous people came to me and said, I would love to give this for your show. And I went, oh my God. 
And then something that we were so lucky to have Christian offer to do was he was, when I was photographing him in some of those images, the one you really like, mm -hmm. he was making a, a small pole and, and uh, he said, would you like me to carve one that could be in the show? And I said, yes. Argelite carving is what I do for a living. I sell my work to galleries and collectors around the world. This is uh, in Masset on Haida Gwaii in my uh, Argelite carving studio. You know, I think Curtis, he knew that there was a great threat against the Native Americans. and I think he wanted to help them in a way, really. He wanted to show the, the true diversity, really, of all the cultures, recording so many different cultures across North America. I'm quite grateful that uh, he did that. And his works, you know, this inspires you know, our, our people, too. Well, this uh, first photo was taken by Edward uh, S. Curtis over 100 years ago. So she doesn't know what the future's gonna be offering her. You know, she's probably has a sense of loss, really, a lot, loss of culture, loss of family. She's not really sure about her future, but still, she's strong and she's a survivor. And this one has taken uh, recent history, uh, taken uh, by uh, Sharon Eva Granger. This is our youngest daughter, Skiljade. It's a beautiful portrait of a, a beautiful young woman. You can see the sparkle in her eye, happiness, really. You know, looking forward to the future. She looks like she's uh, very confident and uh, proud of her culture. And now for one of my favorite images, because it took 10 years to make it. Oh. And it is of my little brother, Bo Dick. He was an extraordinary artist, an extraordinary figure throughout the Northwest Coast. And for 10 years, he and I talked about recreating a Curtis image, which was made of his great-great-grandfather by Edward S. Curtis 100 years ago. We recreated the image using the same headpiece that Curtis used. And after we made the image, and we're kind of watching, Pamela walked up to him and said, so what was it like to have that 100 piece, you know, that could be like 150 years old. You have this great headpiece on your head. Bo just goes, you know, it's just a piece of wood. That's all it is. He said, the important thing is we're here now with my grandson, with the collector, a very close friend, Gary Bell, with you, with Pamela, with everybody, and we've made this image. That's what's important. Not the headpiece, not all of that. It's the gathering to commemorate something. We've had two openings with the Living Culture Show, and the first opening happened on the evening of January 12th. And here in the Seattle Public Library, there were eight indigenous nations. The second opening happened on the 28th of February, and that was for the Black and White Show. Many of the supporters of the Seattle Public Library were here, many indigenous people were here, and we did a lot of surprises where we blanketed people for the first time. This is a Coast Salish tradition where you call people out to witness an event. And my adopted uncle, Jim Thomas, who is a Klingat chief, came and did a very special ceremony for Bo's image. It was really amazing, and all of us who were there could feel the communication happening between Bo and Jim, so it was lovely. And you sprinkled me with water, and you began to sing, and the Indian people began to sing around me. My hope is that people will come in to the Living Cultures exhibit and see the rich culture that's all around us in North America, that, that it will pique their curiosity, that they will then become interested and attend many events that happen with indigenous people that are open to the public. And this whole cultural diversity will become alive and well between many different kinds of people. That's the biggest thing I hope people will take away. Thank you.